Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. We have a clutch to pull today, my 10th clutch of the season, and it's the long-awaited Cherry Bomb clutch. So uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity, first of all, to show you again how I set up my egg boxes for incubation. Out here in the tropics, uh, we have very high humidity, and my incubator is in a room that's already very close to incubation temperatures. My methods are fairly simple, fairly straightforward. I'll show you how I do that um, and you can modify my methods to suit your own individual conditions of temperature and humidity. So let's get after it. Okay let me show you guys one more time how I set up my egg boxes. I am expecting another clutch of eggs fairly soon and I'm recycling an egg box that um, I've just used for a previous clutch so uh, both the egg box and the mats have been soaking in F10 solution for a couple of days and now I've dried it out so it is sterile. I take out the rubber mats. Now remember that I am working in the tropics and my incubator is in a room with no air conditioning and the ambient temperature of the room is 86 Fahrenheit and the ambient humidity is about 80% uh, so I do not have any issues with my um, egg boxes drying out. I use a Daiso shoebox sized egg box and it has a small hole made with a soldering iron, one at each end you can see there that's sufficient ventilation and the egg box itself I do not seal with press and seal it has a clip on lid which is not airtight and that's how it goes into the incubator the incubator has no fan uh, it's a small incubator and doesn't really have a temperature gradient and a fan actually uh, gives too much air circulation so it goes in the incubator uh, just like this with no air circulation and the air holes plus the non airtight lid is sufficient ventilation for the eggs. So here we go, let me show you how I do this. I get my weighing scales and I zero them. This is vermiculite. And I don't need a huge amount of this because my egg boxes don't dry out. So I just need a layer of substrate in the bottom just to add that little bit of extra humidity. So that's about 250 grams of vermiculite and it's only about an inch in the bottom of the egg box. I don't want too much in there. So 250 grams of vermiculite. I add 250 grams of water. So we want 500 grams in total. That's about 520 grams. It does not have to be exact. So we can mix that up a little bit. Like so. And you can see that the vermiculite clumps together but we can't squeeze any water out of it. So that is just perfect. So let's pat that down a little bit. Level it up. And you can see the problem with vermiculite. It sticks really badly to your hands. It also sticks really badly to baby snakes. So what I do to combat that is to take a little bit of perlite I'm not measuring it, I'm just guessing a little bit of perlite just over the top of the vermiculite
smooth it out and you can see that the perlite does not stick to your hands in any way like the vermiculite does so that is now good to go and I have sufficient airspace at the top here for the eggs to go in so I put my rubber mats these are just flexible non-slip bath mats and I stick one in on the top and two just to make sure the eggs are raised above the substrate. I don't want my eggs sitting directly on the substrate because here in the tropics we have enough humidity and I find that if my eggs are sitting in the substrate they do, they do actually tend to soak up some of the water and they end up going soggy and dying so I much prefer to lift my eggs off the substrate and the flexible mats here allow me to put like a little depression in the middle so the eggs can sit in the middle of the shoebox without actually any support. They don't need toothpicks or drinking straws or anything because the mat's flexible. I can put the eggs there, prop them against each other and they sit quite nicely there in the incubator. So that's the egg box done. It is ready now to go into the incubator. Um, again because I live in the tropics this is actually at uh, very little under the temperature of the incubator so I, I wouldn't actually need to warm this up. If you live in cooler climates you will need to warm your egg boxes up and bring them out of the incubator to put your eggs in. Uh, I am going to put this into the incubator uh, so that it's ready to go uh, but it is actually already quite warm so I could theoretically just put eggs straight in here if I'd got a clutch now and just put them in the incubator. So this egg box is now fully prepared, that's my technique, that's all I do. I put the eggs in there exactly as they uh, were laid, I do not reorient my eggs and I put them in the incubator and I try not to look at them for 60 days until they hatch. Okay, so that's simplicity itself. Your mileage may vary because in different climates, if you live in a, a very dry climate, you will need to take measures to hold your humidity in both your incubator and your egg box. I don't need to do that in my climate, but you can fine tune the air holes. You can use press and seal over the top to uh, hold in humidity if you need to do that. Just find out whatever uh, works for you guys. This technique works for me out here in the tropics where I don't actually uh, have a, an issue with my egg boxes drying out. The substrate will still be quite moist at the end of the 60 day incubation period. So no worries for me. Your, your own individual mileage may vary and you may have to modify this technique but as a basic starting point from which to work this is a, a good starting point and you can modify the uh, incubation method, you can modify the egg box uh, to suit your own individual requirements. Okay, here's the female. Let's, um Remove this egg, looks like a good egg. Let's get these eggs set up. There we go, let's have a look at the female. Check her, make sure she is completely empty, which she is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven good eggs. No slugs. Mark them. She laid these about four o'clock this morning, so they they have had several hours. So they are a little bit stuck together, but I think we can get them in the egg box all together. I'll just put that roll out here for now.
and you can see plenty of room in the egg box. Let's just adjust these so they're nowhere near the sides. This is the rollout, so I'll just candle these. These will stay the same orientation exactly as they're laid, but I'll check them for veins. This one here, we'll just have a check and see which way up that one is. Yep, good veins, good veins. That one's completely upside down, but does have good veins at the bottom. Good veins. This one also. Yeah, good veins down the side here. This one. Yes, good veins. And this one here. Let's take the opportunity, since it did roll out, to put the embryo at the top. There it is. Awesome. So we'll mark that one. So seven good eggs and zero slugs. So this is my tenth clutch and only one slug so far this season. So you saw the egg box being prepared. Now these will now go into the incubator exactly as they are. This was pre-prepared with the correct amount of liquid in it and I don't have a problem with my egg boxes drying out so uh, I don't use press and seal or anything. They will go into the incubator just as they are. I will actually put a little mark on that one with an R. That was the rollout. So there's the label and we'll stick these straight in the incubator and then we'll deal with Mama. So she gets a completely fresh tub, a new tub, no scent of eggs, we'll just get this girl washed off, put her in here, put her back in the rack, she looks in really good shape actually, uh, this is the one that was really fat and she's still in excellent condition. Let's just get a weight on her. And she is weighing 14.75 after laying. Okay guys, that's the uh, cherry bomb clutch. That's uh, seven good eggs and no slugs. I've had 10 clutches this season, uh, 74 eggs with only one slug. So those eggs are now in the incubator and are due to hatch on the 10th of December, which is 60 days. Uh, we still have four snakes being paired and this coming season's pairings have already been planned and we'll be starting to pair up uh, some of those fairly soon so my season looks like it's going to go straight through this year. I'll be busy pairing snakes from now uh, right through next year as well so uh, a lot to look forward to. In the next video we'll take a look at some of the hatchlings that have now shed out. I know you guys are keen to get a look at them and uh, what they look like now that they've shed and I'll also be discussing the clown clutch that I had with the fire vanilla allelic combination and some of the feedback and research that I have done on that genetic combination. We'll take a look at the clutch once it's shed out and um, I'll give you some of my thoughts on uh, the clown and fire vanilla combinations. Thanks for watching, don't forget to share, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.